Hello friends, Kishan is here again and welcome you in this video tutorial. In this video tutorial, we'll talk about the Java package is called java.util.concurrent.atomic and in this package you have a handful of classes. So here you can see the classes like atomic boolean, atomic integer, atomic long, uh, atomic reference, right? So basically this classes is built on the, when we talk about the like atomic boolean, this is built on the top of the boolean, that's the primitive. And uh, here basically, here you can see the explanation, in brief description, a boolean value that may be updated automatically. That means uh, this class, this class, these classes, all these classes are thread safe. But this classes is basically uh, supports lock free thread safety. And that's the reason uh, sometimes in some scenario, if you want uh, thread safety with uh, lock free, right? You don't want to apply the some kind of synchronization, right? Then these classes are very uh, handful in that case, right? So here, when let's talk about the, so if you understand the one, I mean, one of the class uh, in this listed over here, then you can easily understand other class as well. Now, if we come down, then there are four classes like double accumulator, double adder, double uh, long accumulator and long adder. So these classes already I had covered when uh, I had uploaded a Java 8 videos, right? So if you go to the Google and try to search by writing these classes, right? Like uh, I have, uh, I'm searching for double accumulator. So here you can see the uh, very first video coming for KK Java tutorial so which talks about the double accumulator right so similarly if you can search I mean bottom three classes you will get on the YouTube which is uploaded by the KK Java tutorials now when we talk about the atomic integer this is built on the top of the integer or int right and basically this helps you to implement kind of counter uh, that uh, if you have a counter and that is going to be updated by the multiple threads, right, at a time, then uh, in that case, you can have a, I mean, counter variable as a type of integer, then you can use atomic integer. If your counter variable is type of long, then you can use uh, counter variable as long. This works for the long data type, right. Similarly, you have a very like atomic integer array. So, you have a, I mean, integer array, right, and you want the thread safe thread safety right uh, that atomic uh, that array i mean integer array is going to update by multiple threads then this class may be very handful right so if you look into the class name itself that is uh, very self explanatory so i would recommend you to go and uh, try to explore this concept on java doc itself right here you can see this uh, this classes basically makes use of the volatile value volatile uh, keyword right and he here you can see basically these classes have been designed on the compare and swap uh, algorithm so, and that's the reason uh, these classes these classes uh, do not use any kind of synchronized keyword or sync uh, locking mechanism so these classes you can consider as a lock free uh, implementation uh, thread safe classes right and that's the reason uh, performance wise if you uh, compare with the synchronization mechanism or locking system that is the more better than that right so here in previous video tutorial uh, we had seen this example right this is a counter variable which is going to increment in the increment method and this method we made synchronized so that uh, uh, we can uh, multiple threads can update uh, this uh, variable uh, but uh, no uh, more than one thread can enter into this method at a time and that's the reason we made synchronized but uh, but as I as I talked, right? So we have already atomic integer, which is thread safe implementation or lock free as well. So here I'm going to remove this synchronized keyword, right? And uh, here what I will do, even you don't need a volatile keyword. Uh, volatile keyword is already being used by the atomic integer. So if you press Control Shift T and search for the atomic integer then here is the implementation of atomic integer here you can see atomic integer class which extends number and uh, integer is also extend by number right so here you can see uh, a variable has already been declared as a volatile right so now this class is having a two constructor 
uh, so one who takes the initial value another which initialize with the zero right any of the constructor you can use now this class is having a handful of method you have a like get method if you want to get the value current value set method you have you can set the value lazy set get and sets so when we talk about the get and set this will return you the current value and that will uh, update the supplied value now compare uh, compare and set right so this will take basically expected value if current value is equal to expected value then this value will be updated so you have a hands full of method which will help you in different scenario you have a get and uh, get an increment so current value will be returned and uh, uh, and that will be incremented by one again get and decrement so current value will be returned and that will be uh, and, and that value current value will be decremented by one now get and add right so current value will be returned and whatever value you are specifying as a method argument that value will be added so this method name is very self self explanatory right now let's uh, change this program uh, to make use of atomic integer so here uh, on the top of uh, this class this i'm going to use a uh, atomic integer so let's make use of atomic integer sorry so atomic long atomic integer and let's uh, give the uh, variable name as counter itself and here we can make use of any constructor you have a two constructor here first constructor this will initialize uh, with the first uh, i mean initial value as zero and here you have option to choose the initial value as well so here i'm going to specify sorry initial value at zero itself right so second constructor i have used and uh, here this guy is throwing an error now here you have a counter then counter you can say counter dot get so that is a method already so this will return the current value now instead of counter plus plus uh, i will make use of uh, sorry counter dot i would say uh get you may use uh, like get and increment as well or increment and get so i am using get and increment right so this will return the current value and uh, the after that it will be incremented by one so after making this modification now uh, here uh, here this value you don't need to declare as now uh, volatile because volatile is basically designed on the sorry uh, you don't need to declare a uh, atomic integer as a volatile because atomic integer is designed on the basically volatile itself right so multiple uh, thread can read and write this value from the main memory right instead local cache now after doing this modification let's run this program and let's see how the, this work now here uh, this uh, this class already we had discussed in the previous video tutorial we have executor service we, i have in his i mean uh, in slides over here and uh, we have a counter class object and here executor service I, we have instantiated by calling a new fixed thread pool and we have given the thread pool size as two so executor service will create a thread pool with, with two worker thread we here we have a two task task one and task two i have designed by using a lambda expression if you don't know how to write lambda expression then you can refer my java 8 video tutorials now i'm calling increment method of counter 20000 times in this loop and second task i'm calling send method 80000 80000 times and these two tasks i have submitted to the executor service right and making pause of one second by calling await termination and finally we are trying to print the final value of counter let's see uh, whether we get the expected value or not and don't forget to shut down your executor service in the finally block right and if i run this application then let's see what value we get So here you can see 
uh, we get the hundred thousand and that is our expected value so in first task we are iterating we are calling increment method 20,000 times and second task we are calling increment method 80,000 times so total 100,000 and if you run this program many times you'll get the same re result again and again that means this program is consistently working working as expected right so that's all i wanted to cover in this video tutorial guys so if you want to know about the some more classes available in the this atomic package then you can explore yourself so if you have a, some kind of boolean value and that is going to share with multiple threads then of course you can use atomic boolean uh, similarly you have atomic uh, i mean integer array and that is going to share with multiple uh, threads right then you can use atomic integer array and similarly atomic long atomic uh, long array there are many methods like atomic reference if you have a uh, kind of uh, uh, any object reference which is going to share among the multiple threads then you can use atomic reference as well so i will i would uh, request you to go and explore this package and um, you can map uh, i mean any requirement uh, with uh, this existing classes if that classes fulfills your uh, requirement right so that's all i wanted to cover in this video tutorial this code i'm going to check in on the github and github location you may get in the video description part itself if you really like this video then please hit in the like button please share and subscribe my youtube channel as well